Hi, everybody. This is Kim Cobb. I am so pleased to have uh, seeing most of you through this summer long carbon reduction challenge. Congratulations for making it this far. And I'm really excited to see what you have to show for your projects by the end of the challenge. So today is really a view into what I'm calling the home stretch of the challenge and a review of some of the important points of uh, flexibility that we have accommodated um, this late in the game for you to be as successful as possible, as well as a look forward to some of those deliverables uh, that will enter you into the um, competition for finalists for the prizes at the end of the semester. So without further ado, let me share my screen and we will um, talk about what is going on. So I love this little gift that I pulled off the internet. Um, really kind of speaks to where we are in the challenge here. So running partially blind to the finish line is I think a good analogy for where we are. So if you are feeling that way, that's totally fine and completely normal. And hopefully through this video and some of the uh, group tutorials one-on-one -on -one tutorials that you have access to this week and next, uh, you will be able to see yourself through the 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 uh, the masks, if you will, and really end up with an impactful project. So really, this is about um, looking into the home stretch. And so these are a couple of things I wanted to review at a high level with you today. Let me know if you have questions about these. You can reach out to the CRC team or myself directly at my email. The first important thing to note is that while we had envisioned conducting what we called an in-depth survey um, in July to help refine your understanding of the landscape for uh, pandemic-related changes in business operations, we are uh, kind of going to leapfrog that or make that um, purely optional. It is not necessary at all. And in fact, it may become more of a hindrance to you at this point than anything else. We want to keep your project moving and we have uh, some suggestions for how to streamline that process going forward. And I want to note that, of course, if you've already administered an in-depth survey, please go ahead and use that. It's a valuable tool if you have it at your fingertips. If you're designing one that you think will be successful uh, with an appropriate turnaround that's fairly short in order for you to uh, incorporate that, it, if the in-depth survey is of high interest to your organization, uh, please go ahead and uh, count on our full support in helping you to make that as impactful and meaningful as possible for you, your project, and your organization. However, if you are uh, in the vast majority of cases who are still working through your um, short survey or you are kind of grappling through a lot of challenges right now with the challenge, um, please take our opportunity to skip that completely and move straight on to the uh, process that I'm outlining here in number two, which is really a very short, less than one page in a bullet form summary of your project. It should contain three key elements that will help both the carbon reduction team as well as your teammates and other stakeholders at your organization really help see the, uh, the guts of your project, the basics, if you will, and help you audit it and improve it to make it successful. So the three things that we're looking for in this extremely short bulleted summary um, is first just a few lines about what your proposed change is to company or organizational practice operations. And so you might note, um, you know, what the change, what the nature of the change was during the pandemic, and then also note the um, scope and, and scale and duration of your proposed change. And I want to note here that uh, proposed changes can range from 100% uh, of the organization forever, which would be uh, at the highest level of ambition and uh, durability, if you will all the way down to just one unit at the organization for a relatively short duration of time, what we might call a, a pilot study of a potential change in practices or operations. Anything in between is totally fine. I think it's up to you and in conversation with your teammates perhaps to determine what would be the most uh, impactful and successful proposal that you could craft 
for your organization uh, through this process. So that's an important point that kind of what is your uh, scope and duration and, and proposed change. That's part A. Part B will be the estimates of carbon and cost savings associated with that proposal. And I'm going to walk you through a couple examples of that um, on the next slides, just to give you some more detail as to how what level we're looking at here. Pretty high level still. Uh, enough for us to provide some feedback as well as your teammates provide feedback. And then see the number three item here is to make sure that you're listing any key assumptions that you're making and coming up with those figures. So whether that's uh, scaling to the total workforce at your company or um, a given unit, uh, how you're using those carbon uh, calculators and carbon information, uh, help us understand your sources for that. Uh, there are a lot of assumptions that are go going to go into these estimates of cost costing carbon savings, and um, those are necessary. And some of them are going to be better than others, and that's where we can help you refine and uh, reduce the uncertainties as we can uh, to a level that we all are quite happy with. Number three is, uh, of course, when you have this document and you have it circulating through the carbon reduction challenge team and you have it circulating through perhaps your teammates at your organization, you'll be getting the kinds of feedback that are going to help hone your proposal into something that has broader buy-in, um, greater rigor, and of course, a greater chance at success, both within your organizational implementation, as well as, of course, uh, for the final competition at the Carbon Reduction Challenge at the end of the term. And so uh, with that in mind, those uh, final deliverables should be in your minds right now. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily top of mind at this particular moment as you work through this kind of bulleted summary format or if you've already begun your in-depth survey uh, carrying through with that. But uh, that is linked here and you'll see that it has a, a very simple format for that final report that we're looking for. Um, the th three things that you're piling together for this bulleted summary that we're talking about today are really going to slot quite nicely to form the meat of your final report. So these are dovetailing and we're trying to make it easier for you to accomplish this. Okay, so um, number, the, the, the one thing I wanted to talk about today that is important is to give you an idea of the kind of calculations we're looking for when we talk about those carbon and cost savings. So let's click on to a great example uh, that I've pulled out of a hypothetical scenario of working from home change that a group or a team is trying to implement. So in this case, I'm talking about a proposed change to company operations that might have 40% of a 2,000 person workforce uh, shifting to a two day a week remote work schedule. And so the question is going to be, we're targeting gasoline miles from commuting here is the dominant change. Um, there may be other changes that they're going to be probably far less than, than this particular change in terms of carbon and costs. How many gallons of gasoline are saved is the kind of key question. And so looking through just some average um, statistics here, uh, if you have a 30 mile round trip commute and you might get that from your pre-survey or you could do some offline research into the average commute lengths uh, in given American cities if you're, if you're very interested in taking this further. Um, then you can look at how many days they would normally be commuting on, on a five day a week schedule uh, for a full time worker. It's about 250 days of commuting, uh, given a two week uh, vacation slot in there. And then you can look at the average fuel efficiency. Um, and this is straight off the EPA, this particular number. This has been improving through time. And so if you look at the total gallons saved for your average worker moving to the proposed schedule, you're saving roughly 118 gallons of gas. Um, it's 20 pounds of CO2 per gallon of, of gas burned, and so that's just over 2,000 pounds of CO2 saved. And of course, the gas savings will scale with the price of gasoline in that specific area, and that savings to the worker in this case. And that doesn't include uh, costs of uh, saved maintenance on the vehicle from not driving those miles, any parking fees or other savings to the worker from not commuting um, into work every day. And so thinking about just listing the co-benefits here quickly, um, that's important to flag. That is an important criteria for your final report. You can look at greater worker satisfaction. Um, obviously, the, the company will see reduced parking demand, which may have cost and implications for them. Um, obviously, in a pandemic, 
ongoing pandemic, um, greater, uh, less density in workspaces is a key metric for keeping the workforce healthy and safe in this situation that may be of unique interest to organizations uh, in this period. So I hope this is clear from the working from home example. I'm going to tackle quickly a reduced air travel scenario uh, that's uh, kind of similar, but slightly different as it uses an online calculator for the CO2 conversions there. Um, so in this case, I'm looking at a 50% reduction in the amount of air travel that a company is doing, um, targeting, let's say, strategically trips that are one day or less, let's say. M many, many of the trips for corporate travel fall into that category. So the question is really um, the same, how much fuel is saved? And for this, we're going to use an online calculator that I link here, um, thinking about your average flight being roughly two hours, uh, that may or may not be true. You may be able to get better data or research some better data um, from the um, from the literature or reports. And then thinking about using that calculator to calculate the CO2 footprint of such a flight is roughly 700 pounds. Um, this is a calculator that I've used for several years. And then if you think about uh, looking at the number of flights pre-pandemic, if you have access to that information from your company, you could make some critical assumptions talking to teammates about how that um, flight footprint scales across the organization. Um, but at any rate, just thinking about a thousand trips per year, which is um, standard for kind of a medium-sized organization, um, you might be able to calculate a CO2 air travel uh, for the pre-pandemic at a certain level, obviously that's very simple math at that point, and that 50% reduction is also fairly simple math. Um, the uh, cost savings are also um, roughly 50% cost savings, but in this case, when you think about the cost savings, it's not just the fuel. It's obviously the full price of that person's trip, including any ground transportation, hotels, et cetera. So assuming that that's roughly $1,000 per trip, um, then that works out to about $500,000 per year of savings for those uh, 500 reduced trips. So those are the kinds of math that we're looking to see um, and the kind of detail that we're looking to see, um, including listing any critical assumptions that go into that um, calculation, uh, be, being careful to list your sources where appropriate. Uh, these are, this is a roughly, very rough calculation with roughly pretty poor sourcing, but I'm sure you can start here and we'll help you do better over time. And so the co-benefits here are kind of the same. You have an opportunity for better work-life balance for those employees who uh, would rather not travel due to any number of circumstances. Um, the amount of downtime for employees is reduced as they spend less time in air shuttles, air terminals, planes, et cetera. Um, then they can uh, recoup more productive work hours. And of course, uh, air travel is going to be associated with greater exposure to COVID-19 for the near future. So uh, that is something of interest to organizations, again, for that public health and safety role. So that's all I had for today. And I hope you found this presentation useful. And again, uh, let us know if you have any questions and we are here to be your primary cheerleaders. We are super excited to continue to work with you one-on-one uh, -on -one and in group question and answer sessions. Um, I will see you, I think, tomorrow and uh, looking forward otherwise to the end of the semester when we will review your accomplishments and celebrate them. Okay, have a great time, everybody. Stay safe, bye.